So first off, uh, we'll take a uh, second to kind of describe what we're going to go through today. Um, because uh, SAGE uh, Mass Intelligence has been uh, around now for uh, almost two years. Um, and uh, it, SAGE has essentially been putting a lot of money, a lot of effort into adding features to the product. Um, two weeks ago, on SAGE's website, they uh, introduced a uh, add-in, uh, which essentially is going to really change the way uh, we design reports using mass intelligence. Um, I thought it was a neat tool, and uh, that's what we're gonna. I'm gonna kind of show you what it looks like and how we can design uh, a report using it. So first off, um, for those of you uh, uh, who aren't familiar, you can go on to Sage's website if you've been to the website to uh, essentially uh, pull in a service pack, um, tax tables. Within here, you can go into the Sage Mass Intelligence section, and you can download the 4.4 or the 4.5 version, depending on what version of Mass uh, you have. Now, uh, this is, uh, again, I'm uh, focusing on the Mass 9200. If you're a Mass 500 customer, um, you'll have the same link, um, only you won't have essentially the 4445 versions. But nonetheless, uh, this, this download is available for all Sage products. Uh, as of two weeks ago, they added what's essentially a report designer add-in. Now this add-in uh, uh, is only functional, what we're going through today is only functional if you own the report designer. Uh, but since we've been um, evaluating this product, uh, really the report designer uh, has just been mandatory. Sage gave you essentially a, a free license of uh, report manager, SMI's report manager, allowing you to, to design reports in Sage Mass Intelligence, but um, it, it really is tough. Uh, so uh, report designer, uh, made your report designing easier. And what I'm going to show you today, I think, is, is a very nice uh, uh, progression uh, in the product. Okay, You come down here, um, click on the uh, download button, download it, you're good to go. What it does is, in Sage Mass Intelligence, in the designer folder okay, that you're used to, uh, there's now a lot of extra add-ins that would have been installed. Okay, What you're going to be doing is taking uh, the report designer add-in, and we're going to follow the normal process of creating a new report with Sage Mass Intelligence. In that, we're going to copy it. We're going to paste it to a folder that I've created. Okay, If I wanted to, I can rename this. Robert's report. Okay. And we're good to go. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to run it. Now, this add-in um, essentially allows us to design the report differently than we would have in the past. So what we're doing right now is we're grabbing all the information as it currently sits in math. And we get a nice little screen here that kind of tells us a little bit more about the add-in. We now have a window to the right that's going to give us essentially lists, categories, groups, account types, budget codes, formulas, which uh, if we're thinking about this kind of back in our FRX days, um, we had three things going on. We have um, our list, uh, our list, which are you can think about it as our um, row layout, our formula, which could be considered our column layout, and our trees, uh, which we can use um, to manage uh, different companies. Okay, I'm actually going to close this, and I'm going to walk through. A demonstration of what we can do with this add-in.
So what this add-in allows us to do, and here's an example of a balance sheet I created using the ABC uh, data set. I can come to the right here, and I can take any of these items here. I can take my account uh, groups, and I can click and drag them onto my spreadsheet. And this is now going to look at math in terms of the account groups that I have set up, and I can use them. I can do the same thing with my accounts. I can just drag and drop them in Excel. Now I have a chart of accounts, okay, just as it says. Here's the beauty. I can now take this chart of accounts, I can go to my formulas, and I can now click and drag some formulas to make columns of data. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my actual data. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this monthly actuals. Now, what month is this? Well, I ran this as of the close of um, of my GL. So my GL is currently set at 2010 period 5. So my actual amount sits at 2010 period 5. Okay. So if we we're looking at our actual, um, this is the number that's going to pop up. You're going to see that we can actually run them for uh, a multitude of months. Uh, but just so you kind of know the, the nomenclature of what SMI is doing, uh, monthly, this month's actuals is uh, set to our GL closing date. So now here's what's going on. If you notice, I brought my actual uh, to this cell here. This is a formula. It's called GL actual, and it's got three, uh, three parameters here. I can do a couple of things here. I can use my uh, Excel formula, and I can essentially change this to be cell I5. I could actually type in 1000-00-00. My year is going to be OK. My period is going to be OK. My company, if I were using multi-companies, multi I could change that. I can even make a, a or specify account category code. Notice how my number is now automatically populated. Okay. If I go to math and I look at um, my cash account for period five, I will have $908 of activity. Now in Excel, I can essentially drag and drop. I shouldn't say drag and drop, really. Uh, out of fill. And now I essentially have um, activity for May of 2010. Let's take a look at year to date activity. And this is going to be 2010 year to date activity. I'm just going to drag my actual year to date field here. Again, you see it's zero because we haven't specified an account or accounts. Year and month is OK. This time I'm just going to, instead of uh, uh, using the formula editor, I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to out of fill. And you're going to see that we have year to date activity um, populated. One final thing I wanted to put 2010 period 5 uh, ending balance. This could be something similar to what we would do for a balance sheet. Well, there's a closing balance here. I'm going to drag that there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to point to our, our account number. And we're going to drag our out of cell. And now you see that we have essentially ending month account balances. OK. So very nice. We can you know, use uh, uh, not only our list to determine what accounts we want to utilize in our report, but now we can easily create a formula and pull. If I wanted to change this all to period 6, I can. 
And actually, you know what? There's nothing in 2000 and turd 6. Let me make it something better. We're going to make it turd 3. Now I have turd 3 data. Okay. So now as we start to create our balance sheet, what I did was just create a fairly simple balance sheet using ABC data. I went ahead and I hid um, the cell references. So I'm going to say my cash account is equal to account numbers 100 and to 101. You could see that over here I'm getting my GL closing balance. would have been the same thing as if I dragged this guy over here. Okay, and now I specify that I want to pull account numbers 100 to 101. Okay, and you can see that it pulls account numbers 100 to 101. In this case, if I were to add 100 to 101, I get 462,000. So now, if I were to create a balance sheet, first thing I would need to do is specify what accounts do my cash uh, make up? What accounts do my current assets make up? Okay, so all the pieces that I would normally put in a, a row layout back in the FRX days, I can essentially do the same thing now with Report Designer. I can come, <coughs> come in and just specify that account number 102 to 149 is current assets. Okay. I, I could also specify a specific account. Uh, I can do 110-01-00. Okay. So think of this cell as your formula. Okay. I can use wildcards. If I said I wanted to uh, say 105-0 and my a wild card and report designer is a question mark. So I can use 105 dash question mark question mark dash question mark question mark. That's going to pull in everything in my 105. So we have you know the ability now to to really specify fairly easily, I think, um, what we want our rows uh, what, what accounts do we want our rows to contain? So now we're going to take this to the next level. We're going to we're going to see how we can create essentially a, uh, a sample. I don't know if this is so much an income statement or a, a trend report, but we're going to create a report that gives us our income statement. Income statement. We're going to show 2009 current month data. 2009. Year to, year to date data. We're going to have 12 months of data. I'm going to show uh, current year, and I should have said this is really percentage of revenue. Okay, it's always nice to see what percentage of revenue our um, expenses make up. Not only that, but we're going to use some conditional formatting to see what accounts make up the, you know, uh, are the largest, what are not meaningful, okay? Finally, there's another list here. We'll use some more conditional formatting to see what the change in percentage of our expenses are. And we can quickly highlight um, which accounts are changing rapidly. So you'll see how we can recreate this now with Support Designer uh, fairly quickly. I shouldn't say fairly quickly. Anytime you're designing reports, you really want to have the uh, skeleton of the report down. But with Excel uh, and knowing some, some features and functions with Excel, you'll be able to quickly add columns um, uh, and rows. One more thing I want to add is um, one of the big uh, uh, issues we have, especially with designing reports, is how do I know that I have uh, all of my data uh, in this report. Well, at the bottom here, what I did with an income statement is I have a check row. A check row is telling me my accounts 4,000 to 999 are on this row, and I'm taking the value of that row, subtracting the net income, 
and I want to be sure that it's zero. If it's not zero, then I know I'm missing a row. I delete that. Oops. I'm missing a row. I've got a problem. Okay? We certainly have a check figure at the bottom. One other thing I did here is um, I'm going to make this report somewhat of a dynamic report in the sense <coughs> that if I were to change this to 4, 2010, this report now is showing me everything for current month, which is current for 2010, 2010 year to date, and then four months of actuals. If I go to 5, 2010, that'll populate this. If I go to 7, 2009, so I have somewhat of a dynamic report developed, and I'll kind of show you in Excel how we can go from a, a rather simple report to, you know, a dynamic report using these parameters. So first things first, here's our skeleton of our report, okay, where I have, uh, and again, this is where, you know, you as a designer have to first come in and say, uh, you know, what's my report going to look like? Kind of similar to how we used to design an FRX when we did design a row layout. Only here we have the ability, really, as we're designing, to kind of take a look at the uh, at the report and how it's going to look like uh, as it's run. So I've come in, I've dropped in all the pieces: my revenues, my cost of sales. In this case, ABC is only purchases. I even throw in a little GM percentage, which you'll see here. There's a formula. I've got all my expenses, my net income, and my check figure. So what I did here is essentially have um, uh, my accounts. Now in this case, this is fairly simple. But as you saw when we worked on our balance sheet, we can use wildcards. We can use ranges, 150 to 179. We can type in specific accounts. So you'll, you'll be able to utilize those same characteristics here. So this is really your designing row. I usually just keep it to the left. I say keep it. I've only been using this now a week, so you'll probably have your own way of designing, but uh, uh, to me, this kind of still behaves and acts like I used to design an FRX. I put in my, uh, my month and year parameters so that I know uh, these are the fields that, uh, that I'll be using to modify my report. Now I'm going to the actual design of the report. So. Let's go ahead and do 2009 current month. I'm going to put actual. I'm going to drop it in here. Now again, it's looking for an account number. I'm going to point to the account number. Now here's where we're going to start making a report um, dynamic. You notice that it's looking for uh, 2010 period five. Well, I want to change that. So to change that, now we can do it two ways. You can use a formula editor. I can come in here and I can just change 2010 and make that a year. Okay? I can change period five and make that a month. So now it's it's pointing to these cells. Now that's great, but if you start playing around with Excel, uh, you'll notice that if you want to drag and drop this cell or copy and paste this. If I were to copy and paste this cell down here, you'll notice that it's now pointing to cell D17, D16. Not what I want. So what I'm going to do is essentially use what's called cell locking or, or references. And I'm going to lock cell D3 and D2. You can do that a couple of ways. D3 and D2, these are always going to stay put, no matter where I copy this formula down. So I'm going to hit F4. You're going to notice that there's two dollar signs uh, uh, on there. The dollar signs lock the horizontal and vertical position of that cell. So I'm going to lock D3 always. I'm going to lock D2 always. Now here's something that we're going to uh, that we're going to do that's just a tad bit different. You notice E9, which is our account number. If I were to copy this formula, either columns I 
and forward or to rows 10 and below. I want to keep everything in column B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of column B and I'm going to leave 9 alone. This is going to make sure that no matter where I copy this formula, that reference is always going to stay in column B, which is what I want. The reason I'm not locking row 9 is because as I copy this cell uh, or this formula down to row 20, I want that 9 to change to row 20 so that it will pick up the expenses. So now I have a, um, a good formula. Now there's one more thing. You'll notice that we have a number for revenues that says negative 375,000. Well, what's happening is, is uh, our revenues are normal credit accounts. So as we're designing reports and report designer for our revenue account, we're going to want to put a negative sign in front. In FRX, it used to, we used to have in row layouts essentially uh, an indicator you know, called a C that would tell us if this is a uh, credit balance or not. So in this case, all we have to do is essentially put a negative sign in front of the formula and it will correct it. I can now take this and just simply copy and paste it. Okay, I have returns and allowances. Now I copied and pasted, so it took my uh, my line out. That's okay. I'll put it in there. I have my formula set for total revenue. I have my formula set for gross margin. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it one more time. Only this time I'm going to do a paste special formula so that it doesn't get rid of my line. Now you see here my purchases which is a cost of sales account, is now negative. Well, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to leave it as a normal expense account. Okay, so as you're designing, you'll get used to, you know, understanding if your, you know, account, uh, uh, accounts normally have a credit, debit balance, uh, when the signs should, uh, uh, should be set, and, uh, and you'll be good. But at this point here, I can now take this, formula and then I can just I can do a couple things. I can go like this. I can copy and paste it all the way down. Or if you've used Excel, you can just click on this little plus sign at the bottom right hand corner. And up oh, up oh, I take that back. If you are next to a uh, a cell that uh, that essentially had some data and it would autofill. In this case, I'm going to have to drag and drop it. But it now auto populated my income statement, which is great. I have my total expenses sitting at 190,000. I have net income. Okay, I guess I could also give the user the understanding that a credit would be a loss. And then finally, I have a check number. Well, how did I get to my check number? Well, I took the same formula here, which is GL Actual. Now, it's going from account number 400 to 9999. Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm taking the sum of all the accounts, and I'm subtracting it by E78. Okay? So if I were to not have this row, in my report, I know that I'm missing it. That's going to be my cue to make sure do I have all my account numbers in my report or not. Granted, in FRX, we did have the, um, uh, we can run the exception report, which will tell us that. In this case, we'll rely on just the check number that will tell us if we're missing an item. Do the same thing for year to date. I'm going to come in to do my year to date. I'm going to work on it just a little bit faster. There we go. 2010. It's going to become 2009. I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. My 5 is going to become a month. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to go ahead and lock by putting the uh, dollar sign in front of the B. 
I'm going to take this. Oops, I forgot one thing. My revenue account. i make sure they're negative. We're going to take out the negative here. And now I'm going to use just the copy and paste feature. Ah. The nice thing with Excel is if I make a mistake like this, I could undo it, or I can just come over here and take out my borders, and I'm set. Everything else is good to go. Okay. Now, you'll notice here I have another formula. Okay. Um, it's called if error. Okay. This is a nice formula in Excel uh, that specifies if your formula has an error, and in this case, um, E16 divided by E12, uh, you know that uh, in math terms, um, uh, anything divided by zero gives us an error. So if I did not take, let's go over here, if I just simply did equals J16 divided by J12, I would get a division by zero, which um, which as you're uh, uh, developing and reporting uh, or distributing reports, uh, sometimes it's not very nice, not a nice thing to look at. So what we do is we put in this formula that says if it's an error, and I've seen it done a couple of couple of ways. We can either put a zero, or we could put you know quotes. Um, I've just used quotes that essentially say leave it blank. Okay, so if error, nice formula to use um, in the case that you ever get those division uh, dash uh, division errors or anything that um, that makes the report you know just uh, not presentable. Um, certainly use that. A couple of things here. Now we're going to develop our current trend report. Well, to do this trend report, you're going to notice I've got somewhat of a complex formula here. Now. I could have done a couple of things. I could come over here and I could say, you know what, I want to find the actual activity for this account. Okay. I'm going to reference V9 and I'm going to reference, now here's the interesting thing because what I'm looking for is a current year trend. So I could say, you know what, if I'm running the report, for 2009, I'll make sure that 2009 is referenced. But instead of looking at month 12, I'm really going to look at month 2. So I have this little kind of vertical table or horizontal table that I can use as my reference. Now in this case, remember how we locked column B here. Well, in this case, I'm going to lock row 7. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of row 7. And this is a revenue account here. I'll put this here. Okay. So now, if I were to drag this formula out, well, let's see what that. Oh, at that, I forgot to lock column B. Now it's, and you'll see that as we move to um, March and April of this year. The formula essentially handles it. It says, okay, I'm still going to look to D3 for the year, but now I'm going to look to K7 for the month. And it's going to essentially go out to our database, which actually does it right on this uh, spreadsheet, and it's going to find the revenues that belong to March of 2009. Okay. Now here, I've got a little bit more going on. Essentially, I stuck in this formula that says, you know, if I7, which is period one, is greater than D2, then go ahead and, you know, uh, make it zero. Essentially what I'm saying with this formula is if I'm displaying period four of 2009, if this number is greater than this month, then go ahead and just put zero. If not, then go ahead and show it. 
So this is kind of a way for you to say, okay, as I'm running through, you know, this spreadsheet, and I only want to see, you know, uh, up to period four data, then this formula handles it. Okay, so kind of just some nifty things you can do, um, really all within Excel now. So now we're really leveraging our knowledge of Excel in designing reports, and not so much having to design reports um, uh, knowing uh, SMI. At this point here, I'm just going to essentially do what we did before. I'm going to create one. Let's go ahead and let's get that out here. Oh, I messed it up. So we're going to, where's our bottom line? Yeah, there it is, first one. We're going to take this guy here. We're going to bring it down here. We're going to drag and drop them all the way down. Got these formulas set. So now let's see how e I forgot one. Let's go there. Let's see. We'll do all the ES and formulas. So now make sure that everything looks good. Actually, you know what? This is going to be just like a bit different. Everything looks good. I've got zero. So now I'm going to take column one. And I'm just going to drag this all the way down. Okay. That's how easy it is to essentially take one column of data and now drag it across. As we're essentially, you know, creating a trend report, creating a this year versus last year versus two or three years ago, essentially designing now in this, you know, within Excel really makes designing reports um, that much quicker. Okay. I can come in here and I can change this to 11. Now I have 11 months worth of data. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. A couple of other things while we're in here. Um, if you have uh, reports that go into the millions and you wanted to essentially change this data, and this is now really just knowing Excel. You can come in here. You can right click. You can go to Format. You can go to Custom. You can go to comma zero. So. And now we essentially uh, have a. Um, oh, 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 oh. Let's go to custom. Now we have a report that essentially says this is 273,000. This is 298,000. Okay? There's a way essentially, you know, as you start getting larger numbers in Excel, you could use a round function if you want to round this to the nearest uh, dollar. You can, um, you know, essentially use, uh, uh, oops, you can use what we just did using a, a, a formatting to essentially, you know, push this down. So lots of things in Excel um, that you can utilize now really just to help your uh, report designing. Here we've got a current trend report. Essentially what we're doing is we're, uh, we're saying we're taking our, um, our cell divided by our total revenues. Okay, so we want to see what's our percentage of revenues. I'm going to take this information. I'm going to go ahead and drag it. Okay. Now I've done a couple. Essentially, to get to this area here, something really nice now with Excel 2007 and 2010, you can go into conditional formatting. You can go into color scale, come into here, and it'll automatically essentially take your data and really start piecing it into three sections. Our largest changes, okay, then you can see these are graded 
slightly. And then finally, it essentially puts your data into three scales. So we have our, our bigger green, uh, light green to yellow, and then red. Okay, so this is kind of just an eyeball catcher as, as to, you know, what are my biggest accounts? You know, what makes up my biggest account? So here, I see, you know, payroll is my largest account. So as it changes, I want to focus on it. This is the same thing here, just slightly different. This is telling me a uh, current year change in percentage. So I want to know, okay, out of my accounts, which balances have changed month to month uh, by a great amount. In this case, essentially what I did was I essentially did a, a conditional formatting. Um, only I highlighted anything that was greater than, you know, and in this case, I could put greater than 1% is going to be, you know, green. And there we go. We could do the same thing. Anything less than 1%, we can mark it off in red. So now we can quickly take a look at our data and see what accounts are moving by the largest percentage point. Okay? One more thing we're going to cover um, with this change with Report Designer is under BI Tools, uh, there's a section here that allows us to email reports. So you can essentially create a report. We're going to call this financial. Okay. At this point, I'm not going to fill anything out else out. I'm going to co come over here to instructions. Oops. Uh -oh. Let's go to here. We can essentially email it, publish it, FTP it. Usually you're going to be emailing it. We can specify the name and the workbook. We can distribute each workbook um, as its own document. So you, we can create multiple tabs in our workbook and essentially distribute them each to different folks. We're going to come up over here. OK, we're going to essentially specify it. And Robert's report. Now we can come in here and we could say for this report, now we could start start specifying if we want the balance sheet to go to one person, current months to go to another person. Okay? And as we specify this, when we're done, we essentially go to send now and it'll push it out for the folks that we have um, uh, essentially our, we set up our managed instructions, we could specify who we want uh, that tab uh, to go to. One more step here, that use the SMTP Exchange server. So essentially this is, you know, the information that's going to be needed to um, allow the email to process, okay? Usually when you get to this point of setting it up, you know, usually, you know, call us up and we can certainly assist. But it uses an SMTP server, much like our paperless office does um, when we uh, send um, uh, invoices, statements, um, paperless office orders. Same type of uh, uh, setup, uh, only in this case we're sending reports. So essentially, you know, really SMI, this is uh, just a, a wonderful approach, really a different approach now to designing reports. Um, than really what was offered in the past. Uh, I think what we're finding is, you know, it's now somewhat similar to as, you know, as, as we've been uh, uh, giving seminars at BizNet, uh, very much a, a similar uh, way to designing reports uh, as is BizNet. Um, this information, essentially, with normal SMI, you're going to create and link the template so that it 
saved going forward. The next time you run your report, okay, um, essentially this information will be there. But keep in mind that information that's contained, if you were to pull in the actual, would then change to whatever year and month your GL is in. However, in this specific report, remember, we're not using the year and period um, of the closing months. We're actually making a dynamic report. Okay. So one more thing I want to uh, also uh, show you guys is more information. Okay. If you go to this website, community.alchemex.com, Okay, and you can essentially uh, register. You can sign up. In this case, I'm going to sign in. And this is a wonderful resource with all things SMI. Now, as we're, you know, as, as ISM is essentially evaluating all of our products and getting, you know, familiar with um, how to design in them, we're essentially a good resource. Uh, prior to this, I was essentially a controller, a financial analyst, so I've created many, many, many reports. So, you know, uh, we also are a good resource to kind of bounce ideas off or take a look at your existing reports and determine what's the best approach to designing it um, in SMI. But at this point, this is really just a lot, there's a lot of information. You can come in here, um, You there's a uh, knowledge base. Um, there's also uh, an area here to get a free report template. Okay, so you can actually download uh, templates uh, that either SMI has created or other folks have created. Okay, and now we're going to be able to take those reports and essentially copy and paste them um, uh, into our system. Keep in mind that after we copy and paste them, you'll certainly have to change the uh, GL accounts that they reference. But nonetheless, you know, at least the, uh, uh, the structure of the report um, is there. Okay? So a wonderful resource, community.alchemex.com. Um, once you get in there, just sign up and, um, and then just peruse. Also in there, there's a, uh, there is an area. Um, that you can essentially uh, get a lot of tips in Excel because as you're designing here, it's you know maybe 10 to 20 percent, 30 percent knowing SMI, and then 70 percent knowing Excel. So the more you know in Excel, the better designer you'll essentially become. Excellent. Well, Bryce, I think now we'll certainly open it up to, uh, to some questions. I think you can either, uh, we've got them unmuted. You can also uh, uh, place a question in the so guys, chat box. For those of you, again, the, um, if you had FRX and you, uh, 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 you do have a free license to report manager with SMI, okay, um, what I just showed you today requires a report designer. Um, if you haven't purchased a report designer, you can certainly check with Sherry, and um, and we can certainly get you a quote. With report designer, the add-in essentially is free, and I, I think it's wonderful. I mean, you can see how quickly we can create a report using this uh, new feature. Um, there we really go. We've got a question. Can you also list accounts with a comma in between them? You can. You can. Essentially what you're doing coming in here, and you know what? I apologize. I failed to mention. There is a, as you download the report designer, there is a wonderful user guide that goes through all of the features in terms of how to use the report designer. So in there it will specify how to use a wildcard, how to populate the account. Um, so a very nice you know, quick 95 page, 95 page is very quick 95 page reading because most of it, again, is, is you know, just pictures of dragging and dropping. So you can use uh, commas. Um, this will tell you, yeah, it essentially goes here. You can use commas to pull in accounts that are not uh, close to each other. Um, 
yeah, many different ways to get to account numbers here uh, using formulas, using, you know, uh, using ranges, using commas, so definitely. Uh, what happens when you merge accounts in Sage? Is that a manual update? It is. So keep in mind that as you're designing or you're managing reports, the report is separate from uh, math. So I guess I should say it just depends. If you're merging accounts and your report is something like this, 150 to 179, well, then you're set. But if you come over here and you've merged accounts 525 to 530, and 525 now is housed in 530, well, then what's going to happen is, is when this formula looks, you know, for account number 525, it's just going to return zero. Okay? So, um, so essentially, you know, merging accounts in math does not change your, um, your uh, report. You still have to go to your report and determine you know, if you need to come in and essentially delete this row so it doesn't show you zero the next time you run it. Okay. Any other We're questions? Good. Um, account title changes. Um, you know what? That is also couple of ways to do that. So keep in mind this once we drag and drop this, um, because we are taking information from this list. Okay? So in this list, what I've done here, and I kind of shortcutted it for our presentation, but just so you know, I went in here and I dragged it. If you really need to, you could um, have this uh, have this as like a VLOOKUP. So you can have your account. No, nope, actually you can. I take that back. That's probably not the best way to do this. You know, as I'm thinking about how to design these reports, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get a, a best practice. So as I certainly play around with this, I'll get to what's the best practice. But I can tell you right now, um, this is essentially me coming in and dragging and dropping this. But as you come in, and um, and this is, you know, a, a static, you know, this is what it is, so it's not dynamic. I was thinking, well, can we use like a VLOOKUP? But if we use a VLOOKUP, um, and I guess technically you can. Let me also explain one more quick thing. What SMI is doing is behind the scenes, it's creating these tabs of data. It's creating an accounts tab. It's creating an, uh, a balances tab. So that's how it's essentially dynamically pulling this information for us. Now what you can do is you can come in here and you can unhide the mm -hmm. accounts tab. And you can see that within Excel is a tab full of this information. This is dynamically created every time you run this report. So what you could do is you could come in here and we could say instead of this, uh, you know, I'm going to say it's going to take a little bit of work. We could do it, but what we'd have to do is we'd have to do something like this <coughs> equals left comma three so that we can get our account number and then we'd essentially you know have this in here and then what we would do is essentially you know be look up and again now you know getting into some more complex uh, I'll probably leave it that it can be done but um, but essentially you know, will certainly assist you with it. So, so I guess the, the uh, you know, long and short of it, yes, this can be dynamically done, uh, but certainly understanding more about how, S this is now the 30% of knowing how SMI works, really gets you to the point of, of making sure that these are correct and you don't have to kind of manage them at each time. Keep in mind, you know, with, uh, with FRX, 
some degree, we had the same type of deal where, you know, depending on how you design your reports, you may have to, um, you know, change the title uh, or not. So this is somewhat similar. Okay. Any other questions? Bottom line, make a change. <laughs> um, Yes, you know, that certainly helps, uh, but certainly, you know, as you're, as you're you know, uh, creating reports and, and adding, you know, rows and, and changing titles, certainly, you know, the more you know about SMI, as with any reporting tool, the, the, the more you know how to fix it when you make changes. So <laughs> I would love to say that once you design a report, you're set for life, but that probably isn't going to be the case. Um, so. And you know we will, you know we, we have had classes in SMI, and we will continue to start adding them. And within those classes, you know you'll start learning how does SMI work, um, and knowing how SMI works will kind of you know get you to understand how this will assist you in a report. And then knowing some formulas, whether it's VLOOKUP, whether it's if errors, you know these are now Excel. Um, functions, knowing Excel will, will kind of then be the next step of, um, of really, you know, helping you, you know, design reports.